Welcome back, folks. We're out here getting stuff done out on Mark Kelly Farm. Hey, before we get going on the next project here, before I tell you about it, I'd like to give a shout out to the good old boys from the Waterford Hickman Fire District. You know who you are. Back in the day, if you look real close, there's me right there. But hope you guys are doing well, the ones that are still alive. There's some of us that have passed away already. And uh, hope they're resting in heaven peacefully. So here's what we're doing today. Uh, we promised you a while back on one of the other videos that uh, we were going to do a bucket level indicator for my John Deere tractor. So we've got that started. Because we're at a point, it's going to be spring pretty soon. We're going to be moving some dirt. We're already pushing snow. So the problem I'm having is I need to know when this bucket is level on the ground and I'm not digging too aggressive of an angle uh, when we're digging dirt and stuff like that. And this bucket is designed to where this top ledge right here is parallel to the bottom of the bucket. So that gives you some idea. But when the bucket gets down below the hood, it's hard for me to really see that. So what I'm going to do is build a bucket level indicator that I can view from up here. Now the one John Deere makes I really don't like. And I don't like what they're charging for it either. And I saw another version of a button, uh, bucket level indicator that I really liked. It was on a Kubota. I do not know if it was a stock Kubota item or if it was just some aftermarket thing. But uh, we've got it going already. There's some stock holes in the loader frame up here on the top. I'm assuming it's for their version of the bucket level indicator. So I've got me a piece of half inch all thread. And I've made it uh, six inches long from the center here. Uh, measuring out to the end of that. And I've got a nylon locking nut on the outside of that. So that's what we got for the top bracket. The bottom bracket these pins that are on the John Deere loader, I believe they're 5 h thread. They got a little bit of thread left here on the end. So what I did is I got a 5 h nut and I jammed it onto that other nut. And it tightened up real good. I had plenty of threads to jam it in there. And then I welded a piece of half inch all thread to that. And then another nylon locking nut there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut some half inch tubes that go on here and one up here so whatever apparatus I have rotates uh, on these pivot points here. I'll get those cut and uh, we'll put those on. Alright we got those pieces cut one for the top one for the bottom. The top one's got to be a little bit longer because it uh, goes from a different point on the tractor. But what those are going to do is they're going to provide the pivot point for the piece that we're going to weld on there next. And I'll show you what that's going to look like. Alright, this is what that piece looks like. I cut another little small piece of tubing. Drilled a hole in it. Welded a nut to it. Put a bolt in it. And guess what? It's 10 millimeter. Hope I haven't lost that one. But uh, that's what it's going to look like. The rod's going to go up to the top. And then this one up here is going to have a piece of tubing welded onto it that that rod is going to slide in and out of. So I'm going to cut that rod now and we'll get it welded to that uh, that top spindle. Okay, I ran the bucket down, made it level, and I made these marks when it was right over here. And then I rolled the bucket back as far as it would go. So I need to cut off the bottom of this. I'm going to measure from the center of this back to the center of the spindle and I'm going to give it a little bit more so there's a little bit of play in the bottom so we're not binding it up and that's how much we're going to cut off the bottom so this comes back straight and then we'll adjust the inner rod later because right now it's right at the top right there and actually that's what it's going to look like when it's level when the bucket's level once we get it done that's what you're going to look for when you're riding the tractor.
it's warm outside. Brandy the Wonder Dog is loving it. She could stay outside most of the day. So this is what we were shooting for. I think it worked pretty good. We ran that bucket all the way down as far as it would go, locked it out. And this rod was still over halfway up into this tube. So there's plenty of overlap. We're not going to get any binding situation. Uh, we left a little space down here, so when the bucket's all the way back, it's not going to bind there either. Um, this little screw here gives us an adjustment because when I level the bucket, I haven't adjusted the length of the rod yet. It sticks out about this far. So I'll loosen that screw once we get this thing out on flat ground, and I'll make this flush right here, and that'll give us a little bit more of adjustment. Just got to make sure it doesn't hit the bucket here. If so, I'll just cut a little bit off. But yeah, we're going to shoot some John Deere green on that and call it a day. I think the coffee's perking. So we're having a good one. So if you need a bucket level indicator, that's a good way to make it. So we'll see you next time. I think we're going to start a knife here tomorrow and we'll get that video going. I'm going to give a shout out to Uncle Dougie. He wants to see that. Doug is a good friend of mine. I left out in California and worked with him the first day. Uh, the job I retired from and uh, I knew from that first day he was a solid dude so he's wanting to see that knife made so we're going to get her made so see you next time on Mark Kelly Farms stay safe and stay healthy